Jesus walks on water. Can you think about that? I mean, like, really, like, like, like you're walking on water? Because you and I, we, you know, like, it doesn't work, right? You start taking a step, you go straight in. And then think about this. Peter, Peter gets to walk on water, too. And this is what I want you to picture. What's this like for Peter? All right? You know, so, you know, he says to Jesus, hey, you know, Jesus, it, Peter's a little scared here. I'm like, Jesus, if it's really you, because he thinks it's a ghost, tell me to come out on the water. And Jesus says, sure, come on out. So, you know, picture this. That picture over there, I don't know if you see it, second window back, um, it's behind the pole for some of you, that is a depiction of Jesus and Peter walking on the water. It, it, that boat looks like it's pretty small, but I think the boat was bigger, and I think Peter would have had to, like, come down a ladder. So picture this. So Peter's hanging onto the ladder, and then, you know, like, it's water. He knows what water is. And I, I'm just picturing him putting his foot down, you know, and like, is this, is this going to hold me? And then maybe, he, like, wait, this, this, this might work. And then he puts the second foot down, but I don't think he lets go of the ladder. I think he's on the water, and he's going like, okay, this is crazy. This is never going to work. Oh, oh, oh. But, but then, you know, Jesus is behind him, and I think he takes a, a, a hold. And he goes, okay, okay, maybe, 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 maybe. And, and then he lets go, and he, he walks on water. Isn't that amazing? Now, it's true. As you'll see it in the picture over there. Later, Peter has a rough time. His doubts sort of get in the way, and he's like, I'm walking on water. This isn't right. And he starts to sink. Jesus helps him out. But uh, I think the thing for us is, like, he walked on water. He was brave. He was courageous. He was a brave guy. And that's what you and I need to do. Sometimes Jesus asks us to do things that we need to be brave about. You know, maybe somebody asks you to do something. You know it's not right. You shouldn't do it. But you've got to be brave to say that. Yeah, stuff like that. So if you ever get in one of those positions and you say, like, I'm a little scared, just remember, Peter got out of the boat. That was an amazing thing. Okay? Thanks so much for coming up. We really appreciate you being here. All right? Good luck with school this week. All right? God bless. So, so for the adults, I, I just think it is worth reminding ourselves that Peter got out of the boat. I mean, I know, the, the stained glass window over there, you should look at it as you leave if you've never noticed it. You know, that's a real typical depiction. And often we focus on the fact that, yes, later Peter doesn't look at Jesus, takes his eyes off the Lord, and he sinks. But that's true. But he got out of the boat. There are 11 other disciples who are in that boat going, oh yeah, Peter, go ahead, go, go, go. And I just think that is worth, um, that's worth us thinking about. Now, to ask yourself, though, well, how's it apply to us? I mean, because you might be sitting here saying, okay, fine, Peter got out of the boat. We'll give him a gold star. So what? Well, think about it. If you take a step back, if you open this story, look at it in a real general way, what do you get? Jesus told the disciples to go and get in the boat and go across the lake. So they are doing already what he's told them to do. It's not easy. You know, little storm-ish sort of bad weather comes up. That was common in that day. So it's not like the boat was this perfect place of safety, but it was a pretty safe place compared to what Peter ended up doing. And think about that. They're in this kind of safe place. You know, it's not perfect, but it's good. And then now they've encountered Jesus in person, and Jesus says to Peter, hey, come on out. And notice Jesus doesn't give Peter a lot of instructions. It's like, yeah, come out, walk on the water. By the way, here's what you need to do. Be careful of this, you know, that sort of thing. He just says, come. It's all, it's all Peter gets. He gets to figure this out on his own, but he's being called out into the, you know, the, the unknown for, from Peter's point of view. And then you stop and say, well, is that true in my life in any way? Is there a situation? Is it possible that I am, if you will, in the boat of my faith, I am just moving along? You know, I'm doing what the Lord wants me to do. You know, I come to Mass. I do, you know, lots of other things that I feel like I'm being called to do, try to make good moral decisions. But it's not perfect, of course. There's storms in our lives, bad weather that comes up, if you will, figuratively. But we're, we're in a relative place of safety. And then the Lord says to us, 
I, I, I need you to do this, this extra thing. I need you to take a big leap of faith, if you will, in your spiritual life. Well, we, I need you to get out of the boat. You know, are we willing to do that? Now, maybe it'll help you to, if I can, uh, to put some flesh on this, if I just tell you a story about my own life. Just one time when the good Lord asked me to get out of the boat, and I felt an awful lot like Peter. So I grew up uh, learning about tithing. That is the idea that in the biblical standard in the Old Testament is you are supposed to give 10% of your income away. Not necessarily to the church, you know, church, charities, whatever. And I grew up with this. Later, I appreciated it was a, a better way to think of it was in terms of what's called stewardship. The idea that God has given us everything. Our time, our talent, our treasure. All of it comes from God. We don't, it's hard for us to see that sometimes, but it has everything you and I have. And it's not that God wants it all back. He just wants us to take good care of it. Be a good steward of that. And he teaches us that some of that, in terms of time, talent, and treasure, is that we need to give it up. We need to give some of our time. We need to give some of our talents to other people, not just for our own pursuit. And yes, it's always an uncomfortable topic. We need to give some money. Now, for some people, the 10% thing works. For other people, it's a smaller percentage. Other people, it's way past 10%. That's between the person and the Lord trying to figure out how can I be a good steward of what I've been given. Well, I'd gone through my, my spiritual, you know, my, my Christian walk, if you will. I wasn't really that mature in this area. You know, mostly I was just, I, I didn't uh, use envelopes. For example, I'd just come into mass and basket would go by. I'd just reach into my pocket, see what was there, figure out what to put in. And I thought I was being reasonably generous. I don't know if I was or not. Frankly, I suspect I was not. I suspect if I looked in, I had a 20 and a 5. I think the 5 went in the basket, and I kept the 20 sort of thing. But at some point, the Lord put on my heart that I just needed to do a little better, especially when it came to um, supporting particular ministries. I would always write them like one check a year. And I got it in my head this one year. Somehow, the Lord put it on my heart. Last year, you gave them $500. This year, you should give them 1000 Okay, fine. So I get the checkbook out, and I start writing. I write the name of the charity, and I write one comma. And I just froze. A comma? Like, a th- a thousand dollars and I just had this voice in my head going wait this is nice what you're trying to do this is really good 500 yeah it's probably a little less maybe maybe 750 (laughs) that was me getting out of the boat and I really do I mean I'm not kidding I really empathize with Peter here I can picture that guy putting his foot down trying to see like is this is this gonna be solid And I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know what horrible thing I was expecting that was going to happen that I had given a check with a comma in it away. I don't don't know what my real fear was, but somehow I didn't think it was going to work. But just like Peter, you know, he's like, wait, this might work. And that was my first big step, if you will, in the world of stewardship. To the point where I got, I got to understand that Jesus, in that, in that area of my life, at that time of my life, was saying, hey, you're, you're really good, you're doing nice, you're doing fine in a lot of areas, and you're nice and comfortable, and that's good. You're moving along o- over the lake, you're doing what I want. But when it comes to finances, it's time for you to, like, like take a step. You need to get out of the boat here. Now, I give you that example just because it's a good example, not because I'm suggesting to you that that's your issue. I have no idea, of course, what your giving patterns are, whether this is an easy thing for you, a hard thing. may not be the issue that the Lord wants to talk to you about today. Maybe there is some other area of your life that if you give the Lord a chance, be a little quiet like Isaiah did. I'm sorry, Elijah did. If you do that, maybe the good Lord would put a moment, something on your heart, where you need to take a step out. 
might be forgiveness. The Lord might be saying, okay, I know you're not holding a big grudge, but you are still holding a grudge over that thing that happened 10 years ago. Maybe it is time for you to get out of the boat and say that, you know, I could do this. I actually could forgive that person. I don't want to, not even sure I can, but maybe I'll stick a toe out and see if the water is a little firmer than I expect. I don't know what it is that the Lord might call you to, but if the Lord asks you to come, I do pray that you'll be like Peter, maybe not confidently, maybe you're not jumping over the side of the boat, maybe you're like Peter and me, putting a foot down, a toe down, just to test the waters. Maybe that's all you and I can do, but at least we're getting out of the boat and we're making progress. And yeah, we might be like Peter. We might end up sinking at some point. But the Lord's going to be right there. It's like, hey, no, you're doing fine, doing fine. Because after, you know, you, you forget this sometimes. Jesus pulls Peter up, and where is he? He's standing on water. He's doing fine. We'll do fine too.